At a very young age, as these sisters watched their mother at work, they were exposed to the delicate art and the intricacies of beautiful homes. And long before, they had developed a critical eye for colors, combinations and everything that is art and design. Today, I'm going to unravel the journey of these dynamic and extremely talented ladies as they share with me their journey into the world of interior design. Well, by now you might have already guessed who we have on our special episode today. So without any further delay, please welcome the renowned designer Mrs. Zareen Khan and her lovely and talented daughters Suzanne Khan and Simone Arora. Suzanne, uh, Zareen, ma'am, and Simone, it's it's great to have you on the show today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for Thank taking you your Auntie. time out. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And you know what makes it even more special is that we've all gathered here for the first time to talk about that one thing that's closest to each of your lives and that's design. And uh, Mrs. Zareen, my first question is to you. There's no doubt about the fact that you've built a foundation for your daughters. But did you always want to see them here in interior design and textiles? Well, I always wanted them to be successful first. So, and they chose their careers accordingly. As you know that uh, Suzanne was always into interiors from the beginning. And Simone was first designing fabrics, which she was very, very successful with. And then she moved into her own store, which is today one of the most well-known yeah. stores. And uh, as for myself, I've been in the line for over four decades. And I must tell you that how I knew that Suzanne was always going to be in the interiors was when she was a little girl of four years old. And she used to come with me for my various projects. And she had so much of color coordination that she would know what was the difference between fawn and beige. Yeah. Now there's a very slight difference and she knew it. And so she used to be very, very keen on going around with me and seeing color and uh, how, what would go with what. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she chose her profession and I'm so happy that today she's very successful. Yes. She's got a charcoal project. Yes. And, uh, so from a very young age yes. indeed, uh, Suzanne, you started showing signs of uh, developing, strong signs yes. of developing interest in interior I guess, design. Yes, you know, my mom, um, I used to always like probably look up to what she was doing. And also like we used to get these magazines home like Architectural Digest and uh, Home Beautiful in those days, you know. And um, so it, it was like I was so attracted to that world of design and architecture and I, I used to enjoy going through those magazines at a very young age. Yeah. And I always used to think that, you know, I want to be a part of this world. And I definitely, my mom and I guess that's why Simone, me, my sister Farah, Zaid, we all are very creative because I think our parents both are extremely creative and they are, uh, you know, they have a lot of zest for life. So everything in our home used to be very perfectly, uh, you know, uh, matched. matched or put together. And you know, with a lot of love and a lot of passion, whether we were going on a holiday, whether we were going on dinners, I think everything was very well organized. And there was a passion for everything, whether it was eating or whether it was home, you know, everything, there was a, a very strong passion. And I think that that obviously creeped into all of us, you know. And uh, it was it was our foundation, like you say, for what we are doing today. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, Simone, yeah. Suzanne found her love pretty early in life. How about you? How was the journey for you? Well, honestly speaking, Aditi, when I was a student, it was all about studying hard and trying to, you know, achieve excellent scores and doing my best and pursuing excellence. So at that point of time, I did not really know I'm going to get into design in some way or the other. I married my husband very early, I was only 21. At that point of time, my husband's family was in textile. And it was my mother who suggested that Ajay, my husband, look into uh, furnishing fabrics because there was a void in India at that point of time. So we decided to go uh, abroad and visit a home textile show called the Heim Textile in Frankfurt. And that was the first time I was exposed to the world of home furnishings. And uh, we took it from there, we started, we first bought our four 
looms, we bought our artworks, we engaged a designer in Italy and then I began selecting the artworks which is the first process of textile you know, okay. production and then I started colouring them and uh, through the years all my experience has been on the field. It's been 21 years of experience on the field of travel, extensive travel to design and interior shows and um, you know meeting and interacting with people in the trade yeah and uh, of course coming from a very artistically inclined family my mother and father both being very imaginative and creative people my father a filmmaker my mother in interior design we were always exposed to beautiful home beautiful objects so in our growing years we were always exposed to design in yeah. some way or the other and travel of course added to it yeah. so it was all about creating beautiful uh, things and objects and uh, pursuing our dreams. Yeah. So yeah. finally I uh, thought about uh, my store Simone just three years ago when it was important for me to establish an identity of my own uh, through Simone because I was a behind the scenes uh, contributor with yeah. D-Decor. I was creative head of D-Decor for 20 years and I felt it was time to create an identity of my own which is why I started Simone which is an extension of who I am and my design sensibility. Yeah. So that's how the store you know, was yeah. born. Yeah. Well, Mrs. Sareen, I want to ask you one thing. Since they were constantly surrounded by your beautiful designs and you've been a great influence, but according to you, if you had to tell us about that one thing that you thought influenced them the most, probably in their design style, what would that be? Well, uh, you see, you, I can't pinpoint one uh, particular thing that influenced them. It was generally because, uh, you know, when I as a young bride also, when other ladies in my uh, fraternity used to buy diamonds, I used to buy, go and buy lovely furniture, old period furniture and make my home beautiful. And I guess the culture was embedded into them from yeah. that very young age because they always saw my home was very beautiful, always very well done. So having said that that um, Suzanne where do you think your inspiration is derived from so for me I would like to say that uh, I think that my basis of inspiration in the world of design comes from the history of art and architecture I've been like I said uh, a student uh, in the world of design and architecture from a very young age and it wasn't only about studying it, it was about like Mom is saying, you know, the travels yeah. and about absorbing like different types of Culture. uh, cultures, different types of, you know, like the different types of uh, disparities, you yeah. know. So everything teaches you and how to kind of like look at a particular design mm -hmm. that has existed in time in your own way. So okay. that is how I used to do it. I used to kind of like pick up on something that I used to like from one period in, in time mm -hmm. and then convert it to a way that I think would modernize it with a little bit of new India. She puts things together so beautifully that I would say her design is very eclectic okay. and very homely at the same time and this looks stunning. The end result you can't believe that she'll put three, four styles together yeah. and when you walk in you say wow. It you looks know, part of one. Yes. Yeah. I would describe Suzanne's design as New York meets Paris. <laughs> so it has a beautiful fusion of the old and the new world. One important. thing I've been meaning to ask, um, the two of you especially, now you've always had a guiding figure in this industry. Now having said that, have you ever encountered something unexpected when you dipped your fingers in this industry? Yes, there are many times when you are surrounded by various types of people who may not want the best for you. And as a designer, you put yourself aside and you put yourself as a human being. And then you take a choice of how to kind of deal with the situation and how to be the, more, the bigger one, you know. Yeah. But yes, I think that it's, a, it's an important journey for every, at every point of business. When you are in a situation where sometimes you know, you can be taken for granted or sometimes people would want to use the best of you. But then there is so much work and there is so much of, uh, there is so much, the world is so big that I think that to get down to that level to kind of like feel bad about it is, you know, shutting is your beyond. own self, your own shutting creativity. your own creative. So I think that the best way to do or to deal with something like that is to be above it and to move on and like they say to keep moving. Uh, when I began my home store Simone, I was naturally striving for it to be extraordinarily unique. Mm. 
so I gave it my best and created something very special uh, in India, in Mumbai. And after having, um, you know, um, sourced beautiful objects from across the world and so curated them into concepts of living, dining and uh, bedding, along with all the artifacts that I was selling uh, through the store for gifting purposes, etc. Uh, the challenge for me was to make sure that the beauty, uh, as well as the pricing, uh, was uh, right for it to be, um, you know, attractive for the customer. Okay. Uh, to make sure that it was uh, functional, it was something which the customer was uh, found it attractive enough to buy, but he could see value. Value for that money. That was very important because if the customer doesn't see value in what he buys, then he uh, naturally doesn't, uh, you know, come back, and then you cannot sustain your operation. Usually, when you do a beautiful house and the client is very happy and they become very possessive, they don't want another person to have you as a designer. So what they say, if people come and say, oh, the house is beautiful or this is very beautiful, this yes, yeah, very nice. Where did you get it from? Say, uh, Simon's or Zareen Khan did it or Suzanne did it. Uh, but you know, they're very expensive. The words they say very expensive, we are not expensive, but they say that because they don't want to share us with another person. With that, it's time for a short breather on the show, but stay tuned because on the other side, we have some home decor tips that our guest designers are going to give to you. Welcome back and for those of you who've just joined us, let me remind you that this is a very special episode where we are joined by the renowned interior designer Mrs. Zareen Khan and her daughters Suzanne Khan and Simone Arora. Another thing uh, that's very prominent these days and is really thriving is online market yeah. and Suzanne you've been uh, really going uh, after it. So, yeah? Yes, so basically um, we are just at the tip of the iceberg right now. We've just about started what is our eventual plan. Uh, we are doing this, the label life.com, which has three aspects of the Indian woman. Yeah. Uh, she, it's fashion, uh, accessories, and home. Now this product line that we've created is for mass India. It is for the person who cannot reach out to a metropolitan city yeah. and who cannot get to, uh, you know, they don't have even the budgets to keep up with, um, uh, you know, the trends of a, of a metrop metropolitan city. So we've kept our price line so correct and, and so well, uh, you know, uh, uh, organized that it kind of like suits every uh, aspect of the Indian woman's you know need Desire and especially to for for her home as this goes we are also now going to be introducing Suzanne Khan Pret home now that is a furniture collection which will go into mass India yeah. uh, which will be a little better like a pricing that can be affordable to all the upcoming, you know, um, yeah. you know, mass, uh, you know, the uh, the Indians it's who catering like new to masses and not just the classes. And yeah, basically. not not classes exactly. It's uh, it's honestly it's like luxury, yeah. but luxury with a perfect price tag, affordable, affordable price tag, you know. And this will be available at Charcoal Project and online. So Suzanne Khan Pret Home yeah. is what I am introducing at Charcoal Project and I just had a show in Delhi, mm -hmm. the India design, where we introduced it for the first time in India design. And it win, it was really well appreciated because people were shocked at our prices yeah. and, the, and the quality because they yeah. looked at it and they were like, oh my God, you know, for this quality your prices are exceptional. Yeah. So we had clients who were architects, who were homeowners who, and that's who we want to appeal to. I want to appeal to the architects, to the interior designers. I'm not going to be only making this for myself. Yeah. I'm making this so that people can buy from this yeah. and use it in their projects. Yeah, they can, you know? they can eventually so, have it. Exactly. In their yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so nice yeah, the India design yeah, in Delhi was total seller. Yeah. went off very well. Wow. So that's something that I'm now focusing and putting okay. my head into and, okay. and really trying to churn out the correct, you know, yeah. numbers, numbers and all because we have to market it yeah. better. Yeah. Well, Simone, what about you? What is in the pipeline for you? Well, at this moment, Aditi, we are still thinking. We have plans to expand and grow across India to the metro cities. I will start with Delhi, uh, probably Bangalore will be next and maybe Chennai or Hyderabad. 
So we want to grow the Simone label across India, four cities, uh, not more initially. This would be a three to five year plan uh, where I would like to make the products more accessible. Uh, we are now advertising Pan India and people are aware of the store's existence. But accessibility is a problem because we are only based in Mumbai, in South Mumbai. Of course, it's a unique store and people would love to come and see it, but reaching the store is hard for most people. So yeah. that is something I'm working on. If you could uh, tell us more specifically, Suzanne, okay. about what are the latest trends in interior design these days in the market? So like there is, um, there is a very strong sense of making patterns, uh, deriving patterns from architecture and um, art and converting them to kind of more into uh, you know more into like a product design so using like so whether it is lighting or whether it is uh, you know whether we have uh, fabrics or whether we have uh, you know furniture so we kind of like the you know the the, the geometric tre the geometric patterns are taken out so okay. patterns have become uh, you know important. very popular geometric patterns but then when you talk about the geometric patterns like now when you in the in last years a couple of years they developed chevron and they develop things like that now they're developing more uh, different trends pattern and uh, uh, like something that is created unique yeah. can convert into a print like how you know how you the journey of how it converts into a print so that's one trend which I see, you know, and the other trend that I definitely feel will, you know, keep it going is that uh, there is a lot of like uh, the the whole kind of function of modern, but modern very relaxed. Is that what's quiet luxury all about? Yes, I, I that's how I define quiet luxury yeah. because I've been seeing how it, the, you know, all, all around the world how things are going in that direction. As the uh, years are going by, I find whatever people are wanting to do, it's more permanent because they want lasting things, you know. I need to add here as far as trends are concerned, I believe that um, um, traditional patterns or traditional design are usually classic. They don't really go out of style. Yeah. They are evergreen because there will always be, it will always be appreciated. Contemporary uh, styles are, uh, come and there is a huge market for that because now I think with the younger generation, with uh, smaller spaces, low ceiling heights, uh, you know, more, uh, you know, windows, open windows, the contemporary style probably fits better. So uh, that is something which will also stay. Another thing I've been really meaning to ask you is that uh, how, how, how much does it bother you when uh, people perceive you as uh, you know, celebrity designers because I'm sure and we've uh, known that by now that you're much more than that and that's not true. Yeah, I think that um, that is the biggest challenge because you are here, uh, you are, you know, you, we, we, I, I, you have your degree, you have your firm, you have a full bunch of architects and interior designers and you're, you're doing a job which yeah. is your entire passion, passion yeah. and that is your everyday routine which, which you create. But then somebody, uh, you know, puts you in a bracket with a couple of like, uh, things which which are just like Not celebrity. I would prefer if somebody wouldn't use the word celebrity, but would use the word as something like um, you know uh, renowned. You know what I'm trying to say? Because somewhere, uh, you, just because you are a celebrity, that doesn't mean you can do this job. I think the celebrity tag interferes hugely uh, with people like us using the word celebrity for people who have been through this journey uh, will greatly take away from all these qualities which they have worked uh, towards endlessly, perseverantly uh, and uh, passionately towards. So uh, this is something which, uh, you know, yes, we do come from a family and that is a platform. The family name is a huge advantage. Yes. Uh, we are always, uh, you know, given extra attention but uh, there are also expectations because of that attention and we've got to keep up and meet up to those expectations but honestly we are both quite uh, you know we are um, people who want to we want a challenge because we only grow better and stronger with a challenge we are people who have been through difficult times and struggles and we've carved our own niches 
and a challenge is important for us. Now my daughters are saying that celebrity doesn't matter because God willing they have been celebrities from childhood. But when I started my work, definitely celebrity mattered because a lot of people came to me because I was Mrs. Sanjay Khan. Mm -hmm. But after the first time that they came, if I was not good, I wouldn't have risen to become one of the topmost interiors of the That's time. True. So it's not just because you've got to prove yourself. On the It's more difficult for a celebrity designer because she's got to put that much of double effort, effort. to make the client realize that she's better than the others. You it's see? About so it, it's about sustaining well Simone uh, according to you what is that one key thing that you know you feel that our viewers are looking for in retail business well the customer sees value other things that's very very important value in what he's purchasing uh, it has to be I I have a retail store in South Bombay Simone which um, sources fab fabrics artifacts furniture from across the world. Fabrics, of course, are manufactured in India. But everything that he buys, he wants to see value. He wants to see a beautiful product, priced correctly, functionality, durability, uh, and then he comes back. So this is something that I focus on and make sure that I give that package to my customer so he is a happy and contented customer who co wants to come back and he's not just a one-time customer. Yeah, yeah. So I think value is, is critical. Okay. Yeah. So value is critical for Simone. What about you, Suzanne? What do you think is the most important factor? I think that um, as far as like for the, for the customer who is a client, I would talk from that point of view, I think it's important to make sure that your product, whatever you're making for them has a timeline we complete and we manufacture and we complete their project in that timeline there is amazing that the communication between us and the client has to be periodically uh, scheduled and and you know correctly put uh, chalked out so that they have they have complete ease and you know everything that we are doing for them is completely understood and uh, so that our project uh, our product and our project can be completed in a correct uh, you know correct way and smoothly so i think that the main thing for me i would say that is communication i think that if you communicate the best way you can with your client uh, whatever you are providing for them, whatever is the, the cost of it, everything should be communicated correctly and that would lead to a perfect project, you know, completed on time and everything. Before we wind this conversation up, uh, you know, Mrs. Zareen, one thing I want to ask you, I'm sure you must have given them one piece of advice when they started out, but today also, if there's that one piece of advice you would still want to give to your daughters, what would that be? Well, I, I think the advice I would give, don't change, even if, uh, you know, uh, you become the most popular person in your special lines, be humans and be kind and be natural. Because by being natural, uh, everybody around you, uh, you know, you communicate with everybody, not just the highs, but even everybody around. And that brings up so much of happiness to them also. And they are like that, I don't have to tell them, believe me. I'm about to ask you, are we like yeah, that? So, no, they are like that, are so like I, I can't tell them. Not that I, as a mother, I will tell you this. Today, I am exceptionally proud for all my daughters. My daughter Farah, she has excelled in her line of jewellery. And of course, so we have a very bonded family. We have, I have won three daughters and one son, all of them who love each other. Yeah. And that's the greatest yes. thing yes. today. And they've excelled. We I think blessed. I attribute that to our upbringing. completely blessed. Yeah. And yeah. to my mother, who yeah. has been the glue that has kept the family together. together. Yeah. Well, on that note, thank you yeah. so much, uh, Suzanne, Mrs. Zareen and Simone, for Pleasure. taking your time out and uh, you know sharing this moment with our viewers. Thank, thank, you. thank you so thank much. You, it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Well, that's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed watching this show as much as I did bringing it out to you. With that, it's time for me to say goodbye to you. And for more interior design tips, keep watching Magic Bricks now. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. 
Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Magic Bricks Now. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at Magic Bricks Now. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash Magic Bricks Now.